be very cautious when using this dye. It's all the rootage that I have at the moment. It's like really, really small sections. Welcome back or welcome to if you are new. Today's video is one that I'm sure you guys have seen before from me, but this time it's a bit different. I've let my roots grow out quite a bit. Um, the last time I dyed it was in November and it is currently the end of March 2022. So they've grown out quite a bit. I've been using my hair growth oil, which I think has helped my hair grow a lot faster than it usually has. Hence all the rootage that I have at the moment. My birthday is coming up and I don't mind the roots normally, but for my birthday I went like a solid copper color throughout my hair. So I'm going to touch up my roots today with you all and take you on this journey that we've been on many times before, but I, I feel like every time I dye my hair, I always want to bring you guys with me because you guys have been here since the beginning of me ever dyeing my hair to begin with. And so, yeah, I feel like it would be weird if I didn't film the process with you. So, like I've had in the past, I have my two dyeing bowls because one tends to be too small, even for just doing my roots. I find that I need two, just in case. I have these hair clip things that I got from Amazon that are really good. They don't tangle your hair, they don't rip it out or anything like that. Two copper L'Oreal high color highlights in the shade copper. Um, this is what I've used since the very beginning. At one point I was adding the ash blonde, but I don't think it really makes that much of a difference. And lately I've been liking this darker ginger color, so I'm just gonna use the high color highlights in copper. And I'm going to use my trusted 30 developer from Salon Care. I got this from Sally's. It's like the cheapest one I think you can get from them. Um, so yeah, follow the directions in terms of measurement. I can do it by eye at this point because I've dyed my hair and touched up my roots so much. Um, but I would recommend following the directions and measurements that come with the L'Oreal High Color Highlights if this is what you're going to use. So yeah, my memory is actually about to die. So I'm going to switch to a different memory card and then we'll be right back. So going in with my L'Oreal High Color Highlights and Copper, I'm going to twist the top off come sealed so I'm just gonna break the seal with the cap this stuff smells really bad every time I smell it I always remember and then after I finish dyeing my hair I always forget but um, I would recommend turning on the bathroom vent when you're dyeing your hair if you are doing it yourself at home I'm just gonna pour this into the bowl and right off the bat it's a bright orange color I'll be right, ooh, it smells so bad. I'll be right with you guys. I'm gonna pour this off camera because it's kind of hard to do it with one hand. Okay, so this is what one tube looks like in the mixing bowl. I'm going to do one more because I know I'm gonna need at least one more, if not two more, but I'll be right with you guys. Okay, so this is what two tubes of the of the L'Oreal High Color Highlights looks like in my bowl. At this point, I'm going to go put some gloves on because this will stain your hands. And if you're doing this in a bathroom or wherever you do decide to do this, make sure you lay down some plastic bags because whatever the dye touches, it will stain and it's very hard to get out. Um, so yeah, be very cautious when using this dye. Okay guys, I am back. I have my gloves and I have a plastic fork. I think usually people or professionals will use a dyeing mix brush sort of thing, but I use this, it gets all the lumps out and I don't know, I know sometimes dyes can be reactive with like metal, so a plastic fork is just a safe way to go. I'm now going to mix it in with my 30 developer. I would not recommend 40 developer if you are doing this at home by yourself and you're not a professional because 40 developer from what I've heard is very tough and very extreme so um you just want to be careful with that um, so i'm going in with my third developer and you want to do equal parts dye to developer but again like i mentioned in the beginning of the video you want to um follow the directions on the box don't listen to me i've done this uh quite a few times so 
I feel comfortable eyeballing it, but if this is your first time doing it, even if it's your second time doing it, I wouldn't recommend eyeballing it because this is your hair. Um, you want to be as careful as you can with your hair. I, I'm just mixing it while I'm talking to you guys. But yeah, um, I feel confident doing this, but I don't want you guys to do the same thing that I'm doing and then it doesn't work out and then something scary or bad happens that you can't really fix. So yeah, you just want to mix this until all the lumps are out. Then this really pretty color. The smell starts to get not as bad. The ammonia smell seems like blessing when you add the developer. But once it hits your hair, the ammonia smell comes like back but even stronger. Um, so yeah, just mix this all through your hair. You could use a dye brush to apply this onto your hair. I find that it's easier for me to just use my hands because I'm not using a mirror in the back to see what I'm doing in the back. I can just more so feel for what I'm doing with my fingers versus a brush. I just added some more developer, but like I said, follow the directions on the box, not me, um, with measurements. Yeah, just mixing this. I'm so excited. I haven't touched up my roots since November, so it's been a while. Kind of like forgot what it feels like to dye my hair, but I love it. I think dyeing your hair is like getting tattoos. I've never had tattoos, but I feel like once you dye your hair, you just want to continue dyeing your hair. And that's what they say about tattoos. Once you get one, you just like want to get a bunch, which is why I haven't gotten any because I already know that I have that type of personality. But if I got one, I would want a million more. And I've already started dyeing my hair, so I think I'll stick with that for a bit. Ooh, I just spilled some. Luckily, my flooring is wood. Hopefully, it doesn't affect it. I'm gonna wipe it up soon. But yeah, it's starting to look like this because the consistency is like a little lumpy still, so I'm gonna continue mixing. I like mine to be a little bit on the looser side, not too thick. So I'm going to add a bit more developer. But again, don't listen to me, listen to the box. They're the professionals. I'm not. I'm just a 22 year old doing this in a bathroom. So, yeah. I've had good results so far, but I don't want you guys to experience anything negative happening by listening to me. This is more so just me showing you my process of how I achieve my hair. Okay, so this is what it looks like now. It's like a little bit more runny. It's still goopy like, but like a loose glue. So first things first, I'm going to wipe the stuff that I spilled off of the floor because I don't want to sustain it or something would happen. And then I'm going to start applying. Okay, I'm back. So what you're going to want to do is split your hair into half. And you've seen me do this a million times. I'm going to split it in half. And when you're doing this, you're going to want to do really small sections, especially if you're doing this by yourself, because you do not want to miss a spot. That's like the worst thing that could happen, because how are you going to fix it? So I'm going to go in with like really, really small sections. Like small sections that you would do if you were flat ironing your hair, it's what you want to do when dyeing your hair. If not, even smaller. So I'm going to go like this. Clip this back and I'm gonna begin the process. Let me bring you guys close. Hopefully you guys can see everything well. I'm gonna try to turn the camera around. Okay, so I'm going in. Maybe if you turn guys this way, it'll be better. Hopefully. Okay, so I'm gonna go in like this. You guys have seen me do this so many times. But still, if you this is your first time then Okay, so I have my hair dye in this black bowl, and I'm going to begin. I'm actually nervous. First thing you want to do before you dye your hair as well is you want to look at the time because you don't want the hair dye to sit on your hair for too long, so keep track of the time as well as the time limit that the dye gives you for how long it should be on your hair because you don't want this to over process and then you get hot roots because hot roots are not cute. Unless, of course, you like hot roots, then do you. But yeah. So I'm going to pull on my hair so I can see it, clean up the parting a bit, 
And then what I do is I just put a little bit on my fingers. I go up top. And then I'm going to go down below. And just massage it into my hair. And avoid the roots if possible for like into the last 15 seconds. And don't overlap your hair too much because um, you don't want to break your hair off. Your pre-dyed hair. You want to avoid that as much as possible. So I'm just going over. I'm getting quite close to my roots, but it's the bottom of my hair, so I don't really care as much. But um, I'm just massage that in, which is what I'm doing. And then you move on to the next section. See, it like stops there, and I do not go down. Do not go down. Do not touch your pre-dyed hair because your hair is already very fragile if you've dyed it before. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Again, going in with a small section and continue working your way up. I will get back to you guys when I'm almost done and when I'm going back to touch up my roots roots. So, see you guys in a bit. Hey guys, so I just finished touching up my roots. I did get a bit closer to the roots than I normally would, but I think that's because my hair process is quite fast and while I had a lot of root growth, it wasn't anything too, too crazy, so I felt like it was all processed around the same time. So I'm going to do a little 360, kind of, because I just spill on the floor, so I don't want to turn it all the way around. But you guys pretty much see what it looks like. My gloves are coated. Um, what I'm going to do now is put on a clear shower cap and let this sit for an additional 30 minutes and then during that time, I like the 20 minute mark, is when I'll come in and check my hair, just lift the cap, see what's going on, how fast it's processing, and see if I have to wait a little bit longer. Um, yeah, I was going to apply the conditioner hair color as well as the Cajun Spice onto my pre-dyed hair now, but what I'm thinking is because I want a more uniform look, is I'm going to wait until my roots get light enough to where I want them to be, go in and touch them all the way to the very scalp, and then I'm going to wash it out, dry my hair a bit, and then go in from root to tip with the conditioner. That way my hair is a uniform color, rather than it be like kind of like an ombre effect. I want it to be as close to uniform as possible. So that's what I'm going to do. I have my clear shower caps here. I'm going to double cap my head. That way it retains as much heat as possible and then I will be back with you guys in a bit. So see you in a little bit. Bye! Hey guys, so it's been like 30, 25 to 30 minutes. I just checked the bottom of my hair where I first started dying and the color has started to lift. So now I'm going to go back in and apply the color all the way down to my scalp. Not really all my scalp, but like the hair closest to my scalp, the roots of the roots. I just got like the shaft bit. So I'm going to go back in. Before you do that, because I have so much dye in my hair because I really lathered on, I'm just going to first get the top of my hair because and that's what you see, that's what people see, so you want it to look the best. And then I'm going to get the very back of my hair because again, that's what people see first. So I'm just going to go in and start getting around my hairline. Apply that. Get my baby hairs. I always end up missing a few. Go down. sideburns. I find that the skin around my face and my hairline is a lot more sensitive than my actual scalp. So this does burn a bit more than the rest of my hair. Um, but it's nothing that I can't manage. My camera's about to actually die so I'm just going to apply this to the rest of my roots then I'm going to wash my hair and I'll be back with you guys after I'm done. Bye!
Hey guys, welcome back. So today it's the next day and I wanted to show you guys the final results. So these are my roots. I'll do a little 360. Yeah, I'm happy with how it came out. I've been lucky so far and um, I think that's because I just use the same method each time I touch up my roots and I don't really do anything different. My hair feels good. I made sure to keep the dye only on my roots. I only like touch this hair when I was washing it out in the shower. But yeah, I just wanted to show you guys my finished results. I ended up not doing the conditioner to add color to my hair because my hair is still like pretty vibrant everywhere else. I think I'll wait until like a month or two before I uh, put that all over my hair to like refresh the color. Yeah, so these are my finished results. Um, my hair still feels healthy, it's moisturized. Of course, when you're washing the dye out of your hair, especially if you've already dyed your hair multiple times, like me in this case, your hair is going to feel a bit brittle in the shower while you're washing the color up, but once you apply conditioner, hair is going to feel like back to normal, which is what happened with me. Um, it just felt really dry because of the hair dye, but once I added conditioner back, it like went back. It was just really wanting some sort of moisturizing agent. After I washed my hair, I did leave a hair mask on my hair for about an hour. I use the Mixed Chicks hair mask. Um, you can use any hair mask, you could even make your own. I just used that one because it was on sale um, when I went to the store last time, so I just picked it up. Did the finished results. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. If you have any questions, let me know. I always answer my comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Talk to me.